Good morning, everyone. How is everybody today? Um, welcome to the Pearl Up and Die podcast. This is episode seven. I'm really excited that you're with me again today. Um, it's only been about a week since my last podcast, and I promised that I would try to be a little bit more regular with them. Um, so here I am again. <laughs> Sorry if everybody's like, oh, stop. But hi. <laughs> so um, yeah, so th- like I said, um, my name is Jaden. You can find me on Instagram as Little Prairie Pearl, um, Ravelry as Creations on a Whim, or as Little Prairie Pearl. And you can find my Etsy shop at littleprairiepearl.etsy.com. If you want to have a peek at that, I sell project bags um, and t- uh, knitting, sassy knitting tags and some patterns. So I will be doing a small shop update at the end of my episode, but I'll try to do that at the very end for any of those who um, of you that aren't interested, that's completely fine. I'll give you a heads up. Um, so today I have lots, I think. I don't know. I always think that my podcasts are going to be 100,000 years long, but they end up only being like 35 to 40 minutes. So maybe I'll try to stick with that again. Um, anything new? Um, sorry, just just changing a couple little things. Um, As you can see, I have a different setup today. Um, I'm sitting in my living room, or my up, well, downstairs where I normally am, that's kind of like our family room. Um, It's mostly just a kid's play area, and I just kind of stuck a shelf in there and and thought, oh, this is a good spot. And I do like it, but I found last week with my new set camera, um, it was a little gray and a little hazy down there, so I thought, you know what, I'm gonna try here. Plus, my laptop is a piece of crap, and um, it almost died on me because I had to move it, and it does not like to be moved. You move it, and all of a sudden, the charger, the cord won't charge anymore, and it'll take a day for it to, like, stop temper tantruming. So I'm like, I just don't want to deal with laptops and technology, and I'm already not that smart when it comes to this kind of stuff. So I'm like, this is all I can handle. It's like webcam, record, do a little teeny teeny bit of editing and call it good. It throws a fit and I'm like, I can't do it. Can't deal. So yes. So this is what you get today. Um, Before I podcasted, this was completely disastrous. It's kind of our catch all. So feel privileged. I cleaned for you (laughs) and I did my hair and I did my makeup. So, you know, you guys are special. Um, And I have lots of coffee today. I don't know. I love this cup. It's so funny. I have two little girls, so I drink a lot of coffee. I know all the other podcasters are like, oh, tea. I'm like, oh, no, there ain't no time for that stuff. It's coffee all the time. So that's what I'm drinking in case anybody wanted to know. Coffee with cream, and that's that's my uh, beverage of choice. You know, I've tried to like tea. I've bought David's tea, and I don't know if it's just that I'm not brewing it strong enough, but it's just, well, like it has no, I don't know. It's just not interesting. I do like their Forever Nuts. It's pink. Go figure. That's nuts. (laughs) Okay. I'll stop now. And no T-Rex arms today. I'd hope. That was so embarrassing. Oh my goodness. I was completely mortified after I did that. But I had already recorded one full one. And I'm like, you know what? I just don't even feel like editing. And I could have edited it out. But I'm like, that's so me. Um, I don't think a lot of my personality really comes through on the podcast. Because I get super nervous. But I am weird. Surprise. And I do the T-Rex arms at my nephews and nieces and my kids all the time. And because they think it's funny and it just happened. And I was like, yeah, I went there. <laughs> I'm such an idiot. I was just, um, somebody had commented and I loved it. I'm like, I'm supposed to look like I'm normal on the podcast, but maybe I should embrace my inner, I'm a total alert, like nerd. So I should embrace that. I think. So enough rambling. That's almost five minutes of me just blabbing. So today on the podcast, I have one FO. I actually have two, but my daughter wears it because it's a hat. So I won't be showing that today. Um, But I've got an FO, I've got some whips, and I've got a whole heck of a lot of dream knitting. 
going on in my head right now. So we'll start with an F. Oh, I guess. Um, I don't know. Just so I can show you that I've done something my week. What did I start? Um, over here. Okay. So I have a friend of mine. She's got, and she's got a friend. Go figure. But a friend of mine asked me if I would knit um, her some mitts, um, fingerless gloves uh, for a friend of hers. Um, she's she lives in Mexico and she's actually sensitive, maybe even, I don't think she's allergic to the sun. I know that is an actual condition, but I don't know if hers is that extreme or if she's, I don't think she's allergic. She's just very sensitive, whether it's to the UV, I don't know. But she wears a lot of, um, well, she doesn't have a lot of things to help her with her hands. And she had been given apparently a pair of fingerless gloves at one point in her life and she absolutely loved them. And they're getting a little bit worn out. So my friend's going down to Mexico to visit her in a couple of weeks. And she asked me if I would so kindly knit her some to, to give to her friend. Um, she was willing to learn how to knit. She's actually one of my knitting buddies when I have my knitting group. But she doesn't know how to knit in the round quite yet. and um, Or has she's never worked with anything like below a worsted, well, like sport worsted weight. And... Since she's going so quickly, she just asked if, you know, I would be willing to do it. So I said, oh, I, yeah, like I definitely would. So she's very knit worthy. My friend is so. And I know that her friend <laughs> will appreciate them. So my very first and my only FO are some fingerless gloves. You have to forgive my hands. I'm a sort of a nail biter and I don't, um, I don't have polish on or anything. So forgive that. But. There we go. These are the, I had to write it down, the Daenerys Mitts by Vlenyane Sestri. You can find the pattern on Ravelry. It's a free a download, I believe. I don't think I paid anything for it. Um, and I really like it. It starts off with, uh, it goes cuff up, cuff down something anyways you start with a cuff and then it's got this awesome cable which is a two by two cable I believe and then you've got these um, like little pearl pearl spiky bits coming out I don't know I really really like them I found my neighbor actually had brought over my friend had brought over a pattern that she wanted me to knit them up and I did start them that way but they were just big and clunky and because they're with worsted weight and I'm like in Mexico no so I changed I I went through my stash and I found some stuff that I had had forever and ever so um yeah the yarn I'm using I'm actually gonna need a second pair so that's why I have this out but it is knit picks there we go comfy sport oops I'm gonna hide behind my face see if it'll focus um, this one is the honeydew colorway, but this is seafoam. It's just this beautiful blue green, light blue green. I love it so much, actually. And how long this has been sitting in my stash has been, it's been a while. Um, my littlest daughter is almost six. I was pregnant with her and I crocheted her a blanket out of this and this and a cream. Um, I didn't know what I was having, so I figured that was pretty gender neutral. And as it turns out, she is my blue lover. I showed a sweater that um, a sweater that I had knit for her last week, and she's my little one that just absolutely adores blue, so that's perfect. Um, but that's how long that stuff has been sitting in my stash. It's been six years. I ordered one or two balls too many when I was making the blanket, so. It's just been sitting there waiting for the right project. And so my neighbor felt kind of bad. She's like, are you sure? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> just get it out of my stash already. So that's my one and only FO. And so that'll be a whip. I need to get um, the second pair done by next week. So I'll be casting those back on a second pair. Whether it will be the Daenerys mitts again or if I'm going to try a different one. Because these are, she has two friends actually. She has um, her one friend and then her friend has a daughter who's also sensitive. So these are for the daughter, those are for the daughter, and then I'll make the green ones for the mom. And um, yeah, so hopefully 
they fit. I'm, yeah, I really like them. I'm, I'm contemplating myself making some. I've never made myself fingerless mitts. So I kind of like, I don't understand the point. Maybe because I live in Saskatchewan and I have to have my fingers covered all the time once it gets cold. But, you know, for fall or spring, I think those would be nice. So I think I might try make myself something. Um, so yeah, that's it for FOs. Um, for whips, I only have one thing on my needles right now. Um, last week I showed my hip, hit a few swatch. Um, it's still just a swatch. I don't know. I really want to do it, but I keep getting distracted. It's ridiculous. I was like so ready to cast that one on and I still am, but I got distracted. I made my daughter a hat, which I don't have to share, but, um, maybe I'll, I'll try to insert a picture or I'll show No, I showed it last week. Did I show it? It was the Grow With Me beanie. It was orange. I showed it as a whip. That's what it is. But I finished it. And then I wanted to make her a pair of mittens to match. Because I have... It's so bright. It's blowing out. It's not this... Well, it is this bright, actually. But it's not as blown out as that. In real life. But... It's this crazy bright beanie, so it's awesome because when she comes out of the school, I can see her a mile away. <laughs> I can see where she is exactly. I'm like, where is she? Oh, there she is. I see her now. But um, I've got over half the ball left. This was sport weight, and it just goes forever. I love it. So I have enough for a pair of mittens. So I started, um, what did I start? Oh, the world's simplest mitten pattern by Tim Can Knits. It's a brand new pattern that they've released um, in the last month or so, and it's a freebie. Um, and their Tim Can Knits is hosting. It's called a hackathon, where they are encouraging you to take one of their patterns and like really make it your own. Whether you add stripes or you add a cable or you um, do some intarsia or color work or you know something, just don't follow their follow their pattern um, as a jumping point and hack it. And I thought that is so much fun. So I actually had one full mitten completely done. It's their mitten. And then I put the same, um, stitch pattern that's on the grow with me beanie by Elena Nodell. And they turned out, it was really cute, but my daughter has such long hands. They're almost as long as mine. And I'm like an adult. She's just got these long slender hands. And I was having a heck of a time getting them to fit properly. And then I finally did. And they looked really tiny. Like they were like this wide. And she gets her hand in there and she's like, I can't move. It was like a stiff board. She couldn't even to bend her hands like this. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I guess I'll just weave it tight. So out it came, which is why my ball looks like this. I ripped out an entire mitten and wrapped it around the ball. By the time I get this pair of mittens done, she's going to be like 12. She turned nine today. My goodness, my littlest. No, she's not my littlest. She's my biggest. I think she should be little still. She's in grade three and she just turned nine. I don't know how I feel about that. She's halfway grown. Some days it can't come soon enough. And other days it's like, holy crap, slow down. Depends on if she's good or bad that day, I think, is how I feel about how old she is. <laughs> I'm sure other mothers can relate. I really hope so. If not, I just admit it. I was a really bad mom. <laughs> Maybe I am. I don't know. I knit some things. I can't be that bad. I hope. <laughs> hmm. Sorry. Big gulp. One more. So, moving on. Whips. Um, so I have two mitt whips that I need to start. Um, so I guess that's dream knitting. But right now, what has distracted me from my hit a feud has been, see if you know what this is. I'm sure everybody does. It's taken, uh, quite a few, few people by storm. It is not, however, it is not the find your fade shawl. I do like that one, but I figure if I'm going to be knitting 1,700 yards of fingering weight, I could make myself a sweater before I make myself a shawl that I don't know how to wear. So 
<sighs> beautiful it is, I agree, but it is not going to be one that I make. And then I say that, and then I'm probably lying. I'll probably jump on that bandwagon at some point, but I don't know. I've thought about it, but I've talked about this before, and it's just like, I'm on a budget. And when I look at how much yarn it needs, I just like forget it. I just, I can't justify it at this point. At some point, maybe I will, but, um, but for now it's, it's a, it's a dream knit maybe in the future, but this is the one it's so big. You guys are going to just, it's going to blow your mind how far I got on this so far. Yay. <laughs> it's the, uh, oh, look at that. I can almost get it over her shoulder at this point. But this is only an evening, like a, like a couple of hours. And I actually ripped it back three times because even though the pattern is really simple, I'm not that smart. I swear. Follow the directions and you will get the right stitch count. Although this pattern doesn't give you the stitch count after every wedge, so I kind of had to figure it out, which, I mean, it tells you how many increases you should have. So I have to just mentally add it up and mentally adding is not my forte. I'm a knitter that can't add. That's not a good combo, but okay. So five points to anybody who can guess what this is. Points mean nothing. So, you know, don't guess too hard, but it is the, the girl from the grocery store shawl. And it is, if you haven't heard of it, um, it is the newest pattern by Hohi Locatelli. So, oh, I, oh, there we go. Um, she designed it specifically for Jody of the grocery girls. Um, Jody had um, contacted Hohi. Oh my goodness, tongue twister. Jody contacted Hohi and <laughs> asked for a knit, um, uh, something special that she could knit for Tracy. And Hohi agreed. And this is the shawl that came out of it. I'll try to insert a picture for any of those that you don't uh, know what it looks like. Um, but it's beautiful. It's got all these gorgeous, just wedges of color with these. And then at the very end, you take your, um, contrast stripe color and you make these two huge lace panels at the bottom. And it's just, it's so beautiful and it's simple. And, you know, you don't have to have a complicated knit to look gorgeous. So I have this, I'll show you my yarns. Sorry, I should have had this all up a little closer, but I'm sitting on the floor, so. <laughs> uh, new setup today. Got a pillow on the floor, but planted in front of my low cabinet. But, okay, yarn. I've got this navy. Oh, it's so pretty. It's a tonal. Let's see. Boop. There we go. So it's this beautiful tonal blue. I dyed a tiny little mini. Look, it matches me. Tiny little mini. In like a coral. And then my contrast stripe. Come on, focus. You know you wanna. Stupid thing. Man. There we go. Okay, now you guys are all sick of looking at it. But it is a cream. And it's got flecks of blue and aqua and coral and whoop, pink. Oh, I love it so much. So these three, I dyed myself. So I've mentioned in a couple of my other podcasts whoop, that uh, my sister and I have started dyeing yarn. Um, so yeah, I couldn't decide what I wanted to use for my own shawl for the big one. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to dye it and uh, enjoy it. May as well... That's the thing. Uh, we end up playing so much with the yarn, um, trying out new techniques that we get one skein of this and one skein of that. I mean, I just said them totally different skein, skein. I normally say skein. I don't know if that's right, but that's how I say it. Okay, so we'll dye one or two skeins of yarn and then we just sit them in our stash and then we don't know what to do with them. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to specifically dye something for this particular knit and I'm going to wear it. And so I... I went with these colors because as you can tell, I love coral and I wear denim when I go out like jeans, um, usually with something coral 
it just seems to be my wardrobe. So I figured with this being like a denim -y navy blue, and then this having the pops of those colors in it, I thought I would get a ton of use out of this. Because I do have my other shawls that I just love, but I have very little that I can actually wear with it. So I'm trying to be more conscious of making items that work with what I have in my wardrobe already instead of just being like, oh, yarn, I love that so much. Because then it just sits in my closet and I don't know what to do with it. And I think that's a shame. But anyways, so this knit, um, obviously I'm not very far, but I love it. It is so simple. It's this beautiful garter stitch. So it's really going to be super squishy. And yeah, the pattern's only five bucks. So if you're, you know, looking for a fun new knit, I would highly, highly recommend checking that one out. Um, if you're a beginner, you can totally do this pattern. You get this shape simply by how you do your increases and your decreases, and they're not complicated. They're not like, not that a make one left or make one right is complicated, but they take a little bit more um, work, and sometimes if you're not familiar with how it is, it, it can be a little bit fiddly. These are not those kind of increases and decreases. So. You need to know how to knit. You don't need to know how to purl. Maybe on the other band, maybe on the lace, you might need to know how to purl. I haven't looked into the pattern that hard. But anyways, for this part, you only need to know how to knit. Um, you need to know how to knit two together, which is a decrease. What kind of? Oh, and you need to know how to knit front and back. So that's where you knit your front. You take your stitch, you knit into it. And then don't take it off the needle, but you swing your needle into the back and you purl it. Knit front back. No, you don't purl it. You knit it through the back loop and it gives it a twist. But it's basically knitting twice into the same stitch. So, so easy. So if you are a beginner and you hardly know how to do any stitches, I highly recommend this. And actually, in fact, even if you're a beginner, jump in. That's how I did it. Um, I don't know. I've mentioned on my other podcast, one of the other ones, um, I wasn't smart enough to realize that things were supposed to be hard, so they weren't hard. Um, I taught myself to knit because I wanted certain things. I wanted socks. I wanted shawls. I wanted a sweater. And I just, I just did it. I picked a pattern that I loved. And then I just watched YouTube videos when I got to a point where I couldn't, like when it says, oh, knit two together. I'm like, okay, well, I didn't really, I kind of like knit two together is pretty, pretty basic. I understood what that was because I was used to, I had crocheted before. I knew how to do a decrease, but I just wanted to confirm that I was doing it the right way, you know, like in case you had to do it through the back loop or something. So I just watched a YouTube video and um, found out that nothing was overly difficult. One stitch at a time. That's all knitting is. So I really recommend beginners jump in both feet, you know, splash, <laughs> just do it. So, and so with that, I may as well go into, um, I was going to go into dream knitting next, but I'm actually going to jump into a different part of um, the knit alongs. I was just going to say with this grocery girls, um, or this grocery, the girl from the grocery store knit, there's quite a few, uh, knit alongs. If you are a beginner, even if you're not, if you're wanting to cast that on, I highly recommend that you do some knit alongs because it's so much fun. If you do run into a problem, you've got support. If you don't like your colors, you can get suggestions and just the general camaraderie of a knit along is so much fun. I've joined quite a few in the past and I've always enjoyed myself. And it's not even about winning the prize. It's getting it done and having people there to encourage you and pat you on the back when you're excited about something and just the general encouragement and fun. Everybody's knitting the same pattern. We can see such gorgeous pattern or shawls and sweaters coming to like, um, just being made. And it's so inspiring. Um, especially when you watch other people's colorway choices, it's like, I would have never paired that with, you know, maybe this with that or whatever, but it, they turn out so pretty. But, okay, so knit alongs for this particular one. Of course, the grocery girls are having one because the pattern was dedicated to them. So I have jumped into that one. Um, and it's specific for that. It's not just like a general shawl cow. It's um, the girl from the grocery store knit along. So jump into that one. That one's really fun. The grocery girls always have a fun, 
fun move along. Lots of participation and enjoyable um, banter <laughs> in the forums. Um, Yarn Hoarder. Um, these are all podcasters too, by the way. Yarn Hoarder, um, Amber. She is also having a knit along for shawls. It's just a general shawl along um, that you have to use more than one color. So I'm going to be using three colors, so my shawl will count for that. Um, yeah, but she doesn't give you a size. She doesn't say you have to knit a certain pattern. Um, anything goes as long as you use more than one color. And then Kay from Selfish, uh, nope, that's, it's Kay. She's doing the Selfish Knit Along where you knit yourself something, knit yourself something. You can't knit for somebody else. It has to be for you. And her podcast is the Crazy Sock Lady. So she's really sweet. I enjoy her podcast quite a lot. Um, she just had her 12th or 13th episode, so 12, and then she had to do it in two parts. I think she was having some technical difficulties, not that that's hard to do. <laughs> I have technical difficulties when it goes properly, so I couldn't imagine being frustrated with your sound not working. But um, yeah, so those are three just for that shawl that I'll be entering. Um, it's just, you know, like I said, it's not even for the prizes. The prizes are a fun bonus if you win one, but just to have that that fun sense of community and and um whatever friendship i guess it's a lot of fun um yeah but also a couple other knit alongs that i'm planning on doing i'd like to get some more socks done this year um my husband then usually ends up getting socks and he's got massively huge feet so it's kind of a pain um, my kids have been asking for socks and I've kind of held off doing socks for them because their feet grow so stinking fast. But I think what I'm going to do is do cuff down. That way you can just rip the toe out and then knit more as they grow. And I kind of like that idea. Either that or do no heel and just do like a tube sock. And then, you know, just the ankle gets shorter and shorter and shorter. Or that top leg. I don't even know my sock anatomy. But... It just will get shorter pretty soon. You know, it'll start as like a mid-calf and, and work its way down as they get taller. So I kind of like that idea too. So we'll see. But um, I'm going to end. There's lots of sock cows going on. I just saw that Christina from The Cozy Knitter has announced hers. I haven't looked at the details yet. So it could be just um, a sock knit along for her particular yarn. I don't know the the um, rules yet. But uh, there's one that you can check out if you're a fan of the Cozy Knitter. Um, Crazy Sock Lady obviously is doing a year, I think it's a year long, like however many socks you can get finished in a year, um, which is super fun. And um, if you're a Knit Picks fan and you have some Felici, there is a year long sock Felici, it's a Felici along. So if you knit, and it's socks, it's a sock Felici along, so it's pretty specific, but I have so much, it's ridiculous, I bought some of these Z-Stash a long time ago, like when Felici wasn't being released twice a year, it was, it was like trading cards, people were just going insane trying to get Felici, and I had one or two skeins that they, I had bought when they were discontinuing the line, and, um, I really liked how soft it was, and yeah, it's just, it's an awesome yarn. So somebody was having a de-stash one day, and I snapped it up. I don't, I can't even believe I was the only, like, I was the first one to snag it. So I ended up with, like, 20 colorways of Felici, and then I've added to my stash. So I think I've got 24 or 28 colorways of Felici right now, so that's after I've knit quite a few, too, so. Is it really a problem? I mean, it's pretty yarn. But anyways, enough rambling. I'll show you the yarn. This I let my daughter go through my my box. That's really hard to do. See, I do love my kids. I am a good mother. I let them go through my coveted Felici stash and pick anything they wanted. I may have taken out a few first. <laughs> uh, I try so hard. But anyways, my oldest daughter surprised me. I have so much pink in that bun. And she picked something that has blue in it. 
and she picked sports. So I was like, thank you. They work up so much faster. So this is um, Felici Sport. Come on, focus. I think it's supposed to autofocus and it works, but there we go. In macaroon. So it's like purple. That's really showing up really well. It's purple and yellow and three shades blue and a pink. So I really, I love this one. And I was going to pair it with, um, which one did I throw my, I don't know which bag I threw my, I just have some little ones, little minis that I dyed up when I was playing around. Um, this one, I think. I'm just going to do Seals, Toes and Cuffs. This is um, some sport that I dyed up when I was playing with colors. So I've got 20 or 25 grams, so that should be enough for like heels. Well, if I do heels, I might not. But then it would be enough for cuffs and toes, for sure, for little girl socks. So she's got long but very, very narrow feet. Um... Yeah, so that's hers. I'm going to do another pair for my littlest daughter as well. She picked um, another Felici, but I forgot to bring it up. This is upstairs here because it's kind of in my to-be-knit stash. So I'll just put those there. Um, Yeah, so that's some dream knitting because I haven't started yet. Let's see what else. Dream knitting, dream knitting. Okay, I mentioned the mitts that I want to make for my daughter. Um, hopefully, before <laughs> hopefully before winter's over, that would be handy. Well, it's what, January the 13th today? Um, yes, yeah, so I got like six more wins of winter. Not really, but it feels like that. <laughs> so much winter. I hate it so much. I live in the wrong part of the world. Um, oh, yeah, I might hit a feud card again. I want to get that, like, actually started in earnest. Um, oh, yes, I remember now. Bleachy socks, but... I have some big blankets that I want to do. I mentioned in my last podcast, I'm not an Afghan person. I don't have really any blankets I've knit for myself. Just small, like a lap blanket I knit for Brad's grandma um, before she passed away. Uh, sorry, Brad's my husband, if you hadn't picked that up. Um, she passed away about a year ago, almost a year ago. It was yeah, really close to that. Um, I had knit her a really gorgeous blanket. Um, and it would just went across her lap for when she was in the hospital and stuff like that. Um, I've knit or I crocheted my daughter a blanket when she was when I was pregnant with her. Um, and just a couple small here, ones here and there, nothing major. So I oh I knit my best friend. You know you have to have a you know <laughs> she has to be a best friend to get that, but. I knit her a tilt shawl. Um, I'll put the link down because I can't remember who the designer was. It's a big square shawl. I decided instead of in fingering, I did it in DK and made a huge blanket. And it was so gorgeous. I made it from Knit Pick Swish. Um, and I just loved it so, so much. Um, but it took forever. It was a wedding gift and she got it at eight months. <laughs> They've been married it for like eight months by the time I finally gave her it. So it was a labor of love for sure. But I haven't really made any for ourselves, for my family. So I have a couple that I'd like to get started, get going. Um, the number one, I have the wool, everything for it. It's knit out of Knit Picks palette. It's the Persian Dreams uh, blanket. I'm sure you've seen it. It was a huge pattern a few years ago, two or three. It's by Janice Hope. Uh, it's just, it's like all, it's hexagons, um, but it's all these um, like Middle Eastern inspired designs uh, from Moroccan tiles or something like that. And it's just the most stunning blanket. You knit each hexagon and then you have to knit them together somehow. But I've had the yarn now for over a year. I got all the palette on sale and I stocked up and I bought every single color that I need. And it's just sad. But mostly because I didn't have a ball winder and I bought the bare yarn that I needed um, in skeins. And so I didn't have a way to wind it so I could start it. So 
I wound it up this summer and it's going to be a project that I start this year. I don't know if it'll be this winter or it'll be, I think, a good project to take in the summer because each hexagon is only 12 inches maybe. And um, so you don't have to have like this huge blanket on your lap. It's worked in pieces in these motifs. So I think it'll be more of a, maybe I'll take it along when we go out to BC for the, in the summer to visit Brad's side of the family. Um, yeah, maybe it'll be a travel project that I bring along. But there's that. And then next week when my yarn comes in, I will show it again. But um, I'm going to start something. Um, now, most of you understand, like, or have seen, or even have the Cozy Memories blanket, um, where you work a mitered square. And I love the idea of a Cozy Memories blanket, but I don't have enough scraps, and I don't... To me, the idea of a Cozy Memories blanket, now I know everybody is different, um, but to me, the idea of a Cozy Memories blanket is that you're supposed to... Each of those swatches or each of those little minis are supposed to mean something to you. Like, it's supposed to be scraps from your own project. I don't have that many scraps or remnants. So, you know, I could buy minis, but to me, it kind of defeats the purpose of the Cozy Memories. Like, then you may as well just call it a mitered square blanket because it doesn't really have any memories. Maybe it does. I don't know. Maybe I'm overthinking it. And I hope I don't offend anybody um, when I say that. But anyway, to me... I would want my Cozy Memories blanket to mean something to me. And I don't know. And I'm also, I don't know if I should say it out loud. I don't really like them. <laughs> if I say it really quietly. Sorry. I'm sure my, subscri my subscribers list just plummeted. <laughs> That's it. She's cut off. Anyways, no. I love the idea. I am not a huge fan of the scrappy look and that's just me I know everybody else seems to just love it and that's great I mean that's what makes the world go around right as everybody has a different opinion and a different style so and I've seen some gorgeous ones out there but I just know for myself I would be trying to be too controlling and I would only want like six or seven or max ten colors in there and then I'd have to like place them um, you know, with like graph it out. And I was just like, no, that's too stressful for me. So my sister and her business partner, um, they have a, um, a design team. Their, their design team is not so cute. Uh, they sell crochet patterns. And um, Kim, my sister's partner, has come up with an idea for a gratitude blanket and I love oh my goodness love the idea so much I know Tara and Kim have been racking their brains trying to think of something that would mean something to them and so this is the idea that they have developed and what you do it's a very similar idea to like a cozy memories or or the crocheted um, stripe blankets that are going on or like the temperature blankets or temperature scarves that you see um, so it's a, a long project, um, but what you do is you pick, say, seven, I think they say minimum of six, and up to as many as you want, things that you're grateful for. This can be as deep or as meaningful as you want, or it can be more generic. Um, you could say, you know, like you're thankful for your friends and your family, you're grateful for you know, a roof over your head or the fact that you've got a yarn budget or anything you want at each thing that you're grateful for, you assign a color. And then every day at the end of the day, or as often as you can, you think about what you're grateful for, what you're thankful for. And then you pick your, you find your, um, your color that that was that represented. And then you crochet a row of your selected pattern. And I just thought that was amazing. I just, it like blew my mind <laughs> because I know for myself, I, I try to be a happy bubbly person and, but I tend to think of the negative quite a lot. I forget about how, you know, many blessings I have in my life, how, how lucky I really am. And this just, it really spoke to me as a person. Um, 
so I want to do that. Uh, it gives you time to reflect on on things that you maybe would forget. Um, so I loved it, loved, loved, loved that idea. So I decided I was going to knit two. Actually, not knit. They, well, I mean, you can. You can take that idea and do what you want. But Kim and Tara are, they have a Ravelry group. It's the Not So Cute Ravelry group. I'll put a link down, or not a link maybe, but just a, um, like, how to spell it, and you can look them up. I recommend that you jump in. They're a brand new group, so um, there's lots of potential for um, making it big for them. And to chatter about this project, I think it's incredibly special. So, but what I decided, I ordered the yarn yesterday, and I'm going to knit or crochet. I keep saying knit. I'm sorry, but theirs is crochet only because they're crochet designers. So to enter their their crochet along for the gratitude blanket, it has to be a crocheted blanket. Um, you don't have to buy a specific pattern. Um, just you want to jump in with one that you could just do a row so maybe nothing too um too crazy or that's going to get muddled up or you know that you have to use more than one per row you want one stripe of color per row and i'm going to make one for my daughter uh, my oldest daughter and i'm going to make one for my younger daughter and i'm still debating about whether or not i'm going to let them pick i've picked the colors because tailored to the things that will match in their rooms so they can have a nice blanket for in their bedrooms. But I'm not sure if I'm going to sit down with them and say, okay, like what kind of things are you happy about um, or you're grateful for, like thankful that you have a sister or <laughs> that depends on the day. <laughs> but, you know, I don't know if I'm going to have it so that they have to think about things that they're grateful for and then I will just crochet that for them. I thought about that, but being only that they're nine and six the concept might just go right over their head so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the blankets as a surprise for them I'm going to work on them in the evening after they've gone to bed and I'm going to assign each color of something that I'm grateful about each of my daughters so they'll be completely different from one another you know maybe I'll be like I'm grateful for their joy or grateful for their laugh or you know, my older daughter, she's an incredible little reader. And so I might be, you know, put that in. Like, I'm grateful for her her um, curiosity or her knowledge or something like that. So each of them are going to have six different things that I'm grateful for about each of them. So especially on a hard day when I've, you know, when they've gone to bed and maybe if they've been, a little bit more trying than other days I can sit back instead of thinking oh my kids were so bad today I can't even handle this it'll force me to think about all their good qualities and and I'll make that into the blanket for them and then at the end of the when I'm finished the blanket I'll write them a letter and tell them what each color meant and so that they can see every time that I was happy that they were so you know I was ha thankful for their their kindness. They'll see however many times throughout the year that I was happy for that and stuff. I think that would be a really special gift. So that's what I've decided to do for mine. Um, I've got a huge list of potential blankets. I can't decide what I want to do. Um, I don't want to do a granny stripe. I know those are really huge right now too and don't like them either. To me, it's just way too basic. Like, I know how to crochet. I'm not a beginner crocheter, so a granny stripe blanket is just kind of like, no. <laughs> not going to happen. I don't. Okay. I'm going to lose more subscribers. I don't like a granny stripe. I don't like a granny square either. I just, I don't know. They just, ah, my phone. It always does this. Every time I go to podcast, my phone rings. Okay, be right Hi, sorry about that. Okay, so phone's been answered. We'll just not worry about that anymore. What was I saying? Oh yeah, so my crochet blanket. I haven't decided on the pattern yet, but it won't be <laughs> a granny stripe. <laughs> um, yeah, same reason as my other, why I don't really care for the cozy memories. I just, I don't know, I think they look messy. I just I don't like them that much. I don't know. I'm not going to apologize. That's just my my personal opinion. And uh, 
I don't force it on others. And I actually am really enjoying watching other people um, getting into crocheting again. Um, it kind of becomes forgotten or it gets a bad gets a bad rap sometimes. And you can create such gorgeous things with crochet. So even though I don't care for a cozy, or not the cozy memories, um, the granny stripe blankets, if it introduces people to the world of crochet, then that's awesome. And once they get comfortable with those techniques and those stitches, I mean, by the time you finish a massive granny stripe blanket, you are a pro at that stitch. And uh, everything after that is going to come very easily to you. So I highly recommend that, you know, if you haven't crocheted before, go for it and check out the granny stripe craze that's going on right now because you might just find something new to love. But yeah, there's that. Sorry, I kind of ranted. <laughs> Ah, uh, I'm sorry. I'll go from 300 subscribers to like five now, I'm sure. But but maybe some of you feel the same way. <laughs> Just have never been brave enough. I did it for you. Ah, oh, bad. Sorry. <laughs> so anyways, that's about it for whips and FOs and dream knitting. So for now, I'm going to show you some stuff that I've got. Yay. I'm so excited. I don't... Uh, I don't know. I want to say I don't shop that often, but it seems like that's not always true. But anyways, my latest thing that I purchased, I completely splurged. I find that there's every once in a while something will catch my eye and it will be worth a splurge on. Uh, Tannis Fiber Arts is one of them. Um, I have bought one other of her colorways, um, her Aquarelle, um, quite a while ago. I can't remember what now. I think was it in the summertime when I bought it? She had an update of just that color, and it was only going to be available that one time. She says she'll never dye it again. Whether she changes her mind, I'm not sure. But I thought, you know what, I better snap it up. Because there's very few yarns that make me just, like, absolutely, like, ah, I need that. So that was one of them. And I've been watching her for quite a while. And I keep pop seeing this one colorway popping up. And it's her Hummingbird colorway. And she was having a massive... Boxing Day um, update on her Etsy shop and so I waited and I clicked refresh 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 you know <laughs> and then finally at exactly like she said exactly at 10 o'clock or whatever time it was her time she was going to do it but you know sometimes like my computer might be out a little bit on the timer or whatever so I was refreshing and refreshing and then boom there they were and I had two of those skeins in my cart before I could even think because I was like, these are going to go fast. I did. I snagged sorry, two in Hummingbird. So I kind of, you know, if you're getting one, you may as well get two because then you can really make something awesome with it. But look. Is that focusing? Oh. Look at that. Like I can't even believe. Like this is incredibly gorgeous those colors. Love, love them. So this is her, this is Hummingbird on her pure wash, come on, on her pure, pure wash fingering, which is a very cool. I was looking up about her pure wash and I was like, well, I don't understand what it is, but it is a super wash merino that's made without chemicals. So it's organic. Um, she had said on, I think it was her blog that I was reading that um, the process that's needed to make a wool, a superwash wool, involves heavy chemicals and it's pretty bad for the environment apparently. And so for her and her husband, they try to live, um, I don't know if they try to live more organically or not, but it, the environment is important to both of them. And so they were looking for a way, because they use, they dye so much yarn, they were looking for a way to make their their uh, yarns more earth friendly I guess I want to say and they came across um, a dye or a, a mill that was willing to work with them and they the pure wash base is theirs like nobody else in the world as far as I can tell has it which is incredibly special and I mean it feels it feels soft but it still feels woolly like, does that make sense? Like, it's going to be super wash. I'll be able to throw it in the washer and into the dryer for a short bit. 
without having to worry about it felting, but it's not as slippery as other wools. It still feels like a woolly toes. Oh, and it's incredibly soft, but it's not slippery. Like I can't really describe it. It's almost like you'd have to feel it for yourself to understand what I'm saying, but it's amazing yarn and the colors. Look at it again, just cause you know, on her picture on the Etsy update, it was a little bit more cream and brown. And I was thinking, I'm like, Oh, I've seen so many pretty pictures of the hummingbird. And then I was kind of like, you know what? But I says, whatever. I says, just because one skein turned out like that, that she photographed every single one, because her hand dyed is going to look so different. And I'm so glad that I didn't let that picture deter me because it's still beautiful. It just wasn't as pretty as some of the other ones I'd seen in the past, but these ones like exceed my expectations. They're amazing. So I have no clue what I'm going to knit with those, but they're going to sit in my stash and be gorgeous for a while. And then these other ones, they're not really stash enhancers. They're ones that I've dyed. Every day that I dye something, it's a co learning experience. I wanted Robin Egg Blue. That's what I got. That's not Robin Egg Blue. <laughs> that is, I don't know, it's showing more blue. It's a, in the thing, but it's actually a very green blue. That's like a turquoise, but it's just way too dark. It's not the color I was going for. And in fact, I had saturated this so heavily that it didn't, all the dye didn't exhaust out of my pot. So I threw in another skein of yarn and then I got Robin egg blue. <laughs> so, ah, but I love this. This is for my little one who just loves blue. So it'll be a hat for her. And then, I don't know, she really liked this one too. So I'm not sure what. And they go, I mean, they're obviously on the other one end of the spectrum and the other. But I don't know, I really like those. And then this one is one that I dyed up the other day. And I really like it. It's this beautiful brown, red throughout got red speckles you can see some speckling in there and this is sorry the blue is just uh where I've tied it off but yeah it's got like bright red a dark red it's tonal oh, I like it I don't know what I'm gonna do with it yet I don't know but I really like it I was going for a specific look. I didn't quite get it. I've dyed it, the thing again, like the skein again to get the look that I liked. I'll show it next week. Um, actually, I have it over there, but I'll show it next week. Um, but yeah, I love, I'm really enjoying doing the dyeing and stuff like that. As you can see, like I've dyed my yarn for my uh, grocery girls knit um, shelf and those and I don't know. It's so much fun. I really enjoy being able to think of something and then create it and then knit it. And it's just, it's so satisfying. It's awesome. I'm, my sister and I both love it. So another creative outlet. Yay. Okay. So that's pretty much to the end of everything um, that I wanted to talk about. Oh, first of all, though, before I go into shop update, um, I want to talk to you or mention I haven't started it yet but I'm going to it's going to be next podcast my Instagram followers is at 493 so I'm so excited when I hit 500 I'm going to do a giveaway um, I think it's going to be a bag from my shop um, I haven't decided 100% so I'm not going to show but it's going to be a bag from my shop and I dyed up a skein of yarn um, that matches one particular bag. Um, so if I choose that bag, the yarn will be going with it. So it'll be a bag and some yarn and I don't know, maybe a stitch marker too. I'm not sure exactly what yet, but I'll be doing a small giveaway for my Instagram followers. So if you don't follow me yet, please do. Cause once I hit 500, I'm only seven away. Um, I'll be doing that. So there'll be, you know, it'll be like the usual Instagram followers, like the picture, share it and you'll be entered to win my my first my first giveaway yay 
I'm so excited. So yeah, I'll have more details and I'll show the prize next week. So if that's, if you're not interested in seeing my shop update, then, then I'll say goodbye now. And if you want to hang on for five more minutes to see what new things I've been sewing, then we'll get into that now. So, um, I have some new bags. I've been sewing like crazy. Um, I've got fun things coming up. I'm so excited. This year is going to be awesome. Oh, I'm so excited. I've got a collab coming up soon. I'm not going to say with who, but that's in the works, sort of. We've started tossing around ideas, so I'm very excited. Um, and yeah, I've got a couple new design bags or bag designs, and I'm working on revamping all of my bags. Not all to the partic that particular style, but just I want to make sure mine now will have a handle. These ones don't, um, but like I said, I am working on revamping my bag style. Um, I really like this style, but I'd like to to do something to make it my own um, and not so so basic, I guess. I don't really know. I I don't want to say anything that uh, makes it seem like my bags suck because they don't. <laughs> they don't. They're a great little bag, but I just I think I'd like them to have a pocket or you know some little things when I'm knitting in my own like using my own bags. I'm like, man, I should have put a, a pocket in or a tag or a or a handle or something, you know. So I'm working on putting all the ideas together and putting them all in one bag and kind of making the ultimate knitting bag, but uh, I'm not there yet. So right now these ones are, are my base, like my standard bags for right now. But anyways, these are them. These ones are my little sock size. I like this size a lot. They fit a nice cake. So here, this is a full cake. And this is the sock bag. It looks really big, so it's like, ooh, right here. But, you know, it's a decent in comparison to there. Oop, oop, there we go. So you can fit your, your ball of yarn in. And you got tons of room in there. Let me see how much room. So this is a sock size. Perfect for socks. And I love this fabric. Sorry, I'm showing the wrong side. But look. <laughs> he's a frog. With a bell, bee in his belly. Oh, he's so sweet. But that's number one. I only have one of these. I may, may be able to sneak another, um, another bag out of this fabric. But it was just a scrap that I had left. Um, I don't know, not really a scrap. It was just a small piece that I ended up having left over. So I was able to sneak two bags, or one bag for sure, and then hopefully a second bag. Um, I'll be able to get out of it. But I really like this one. I don't even know who made this fabric. I have a feeling it was Tula Pink because it's very Tula Pink-ish. If you're not familiar with her fabric, she's got the, the purple fox um, fabric, like this one, you've seen everywhere. I have to mail this one out today. But this purple fabric is Tula Pink. This is the last one and it's sold. So it actually has to go out this afternoon. Um, so yes, I've got one of these frogs. I've got one more like like this. It's a little bit. It, this is the same fabric as I've shown before, um, but I didn't have any more lime green polka dots for the bottom. But it's so it's like this. Um, it matches this little matches uh, the green in there. I love it so much. And then it has the little stitch marker with the little um, come on paper airplane whatever it's paper airplane you can see it on my Etsy shop <laughs> did a close up there and then I have this one I love it so so much it's so cute look ah so cute and yeah so I've got one of those in the shop and then I've had this style before and I'm almost to the end of it I should have bought more I just adore this fabric and I don't have any more I think I might have enough cut for one, one more bag, but there's that one. And I love these, these little, oh, where's my finger? There we go. These little, uh, 
I don't know what they're supposed to be. Just the, like a blob of paint. I don't know. It's kind of watercolor. Look, they remind me of sheep's faces. Maybe I'm the only one that sees that. Whoops. Ah, man, I'm going the wrong direction. Sorry about that. I don't know. They look like little sheep and their little ears. Oh, my goodness. So cute. Love them. And then, like, I I guess I don't even know if I need to bother showing these ones, but I will. I've got these two. This one and this one. They're, this, they're the same, but different. <laughs> Obviously, this one has more of the the uh, pop, the bottle tops, and then this one's got more soda pop fabric. So they're just kind of, they're the same um, fabrics, just oriented a different way. And, and then this one. So those are my sock ones. Those are what's available in my shop right now. I have so many more fabrics, it's ridiculous. I need to get sewing. But I also wanted to show, I don't think I have a comparison on my Etsy shop, but I have medium bags as well. So um, here's this one. These fun little teal turquoise colors, and it's quite a bit bigger, um, yarn-wise. Uh, it's the same ball. See, I don't have another another ball. Except for, okay, I'll put this one in. Sorry, I'm trying to do it on my lap. It's not easy. Okay, so this one fits two skeins in the bottom. So it's, it's a little wider and it's quite a bit deeper like those balls there see like they're down there so you still have like this huge chunk of room for your shawl on top so this is my medium like two to three skein shawl size bag so if anything in my shop says two to three skein shawl size that's this size um, so in comparison I'm going to get used to this camera. I'm sorry. There. So yeah, they're quite a bit bigger. I really like this size. I only have, I have three like this. Um, I don't have any more styles right now. So eventually I will get them in. But um, for right now, it's three like this. I've got two with a brown zipper. And they don't have a stitch marker attached, but they'll come with a stitch marker. And then I've got one with like a Caribbean blue zipper. So I've got three of the bigger size, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of the small ones. So yeah, if you'd like to have a peek, that would be fun. And before I go, so that's those ones. But like I said, I have a new design. I don't have it up in the shop yet. I had one and it sold immediately. <laughs> so yay, that was exciting. But if you've been looking, back here I'm wondering what this is this is the new style I'm gonna be carrying I have to get some made up but uh, I'm still working out like what's the best interfacing to be using um, with this particular style so that it's squishy but not floppy and because it needs to be able to have enough sturdiness to stand up on its own but okay so here let me show you zip 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 right now this is it closed it's got, you know, the zipper comes down. It looks like a small ish bag. Then, when you unzip it, it pops open completely wide. Hey, look, it's my Hitta Cube. <laughs> it is a square bag. Whoop, back here. It's got pockets on the inside. So this one is a wide a pocket. It's about four inches wide. And then this side, uh, did I do it in this one? Yes, I did. I sewed a little pocket, same pocket, but I put it so that you can put like a pencil or a crochet hook or a knitting needle, like your knitting needles, pop them down in there to hold your project. And then when you're done, you want to close it up. You just like this, just fold it and give it a zip. So it's compact. It's fun. I love it so much. It reminds me of like a Mary Poppins style bag. And now I'm working on a smaller design. This one is the same exact idea. It's a smaller size, but I made it just as deep. It almost looks like, yeah, it's just as deep. 
So it holds almost as much as the last one. It's full. <laughs> I've got, I just shoved a bunch of junk in here. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's just not quite as wide. And so I'll be offering this one. Like I said, I'm still trying to figure out my interfacing. So I had used like a stiffer interfacing, but you see how it wrinkled. I don't really care for that. I mean, I don't want it to look like garbage or like it's been tossed around and stepped on and beaten up. So this interfacing wasn't right. So I'm still researching, but eventually this size will end up in my shop as well. So I'll have the two sizes. I'll have the really big size, which will be perfect for like a sweater. This will not be a tote around your, you know, to the dentist's office or to, you know, out and about. It's not going to get a big handle because, I mean, there's not really any way of zipping it shut to walk around with. And, I mean, it's kind of big. The base is quite large. You know, so it's not going to be one that's going to be, you know, a traveling one. This will be like a home one or or maybe a travel one to sit with you in the car. But, I mean, like what I mean is I'm not going to put a wrist strap on it because it's going to be heavy. It's made from canvas, so it's hefty. So it's not, uh, yeah, it's not really overly travelable, I guess. <laughs> it's good. It's awesome. I really, really love it because it does have so much room. It's like so surprising because you look at it and it doesn't look that big and then boom, it's huge. So that's fun. That's a new style that'll be coming into my shop very soon. Um, I had it up on Instagram as a sneak peek. Like I said, I sold one already and I have a custom order for another. And then after I'm finished those, I will, uh, I'll be uh, getting those into my shop as a regular item. Uh, they just take a lot more they don't take a lot more work, but but they're uh, they're labor intensive. But I love them, so I guess that'll be it for today, um, because it's already running at over an hour. I just kept on talking. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hopefully, it doesn't take me three days to upload it. My internet is so slow here. Uh, rural Saskatchewan, you gotta love it sometimes. But anyway, so that I think is everything. So I'm going to go. I hope to be back in a week and a half, two weeks maybe at the max um, with something to show you for projects, FOs maybe. Maybe I'll be done my shawl. Maybe I'll have started my hit a few. I don't know. <laughs> I guess we'll find out in two weeks. So thank you so much for tuning in and watching um, my quirky little podcast. I really appreciate it. And yeah, I guess I will see you guys next time. Thanks. Bye.